Hello, I'm Glenn W. Hunter, and with me today is Shore Denny, our subject matter expert. And this is the three C's of social emotional learning. Communication, community, and collaboration. And today what we're gonna talk about is something that's near and dear to everyone here in the Inland Empire, mental health, the pandemic, and the heat. Weather, weather, weather. On into that, and sure, if you're okay, we're going to jump right into this really hot topic. I'm sorry, I could not avoid the pun. <laughs> so, when we think about what's going on, particularly here in the Inland Empire, summertime coincides with extremely hot weather. For 2020, the extreme heat dominated the summer. And now that's creeping into the autumn. I mean, record-breaking heat. How is that affecting people's mental state, Shore? Wow, I think it's in a negative way, right? Right now, especially if you're just going to talk about the heat. Um, we deal with it almost every year. It's going to be hot, you know, and, and we're in a climate, we're in a place where the climate is hot, very hot. Um, so I, I kind of feel like it's a normal for me for this time of year for it to be really warm. But if we're going to add COVID to the equation, then we come into a lot of, uh, uh, you know, very negative things that begin to happen in our mental state, you know, and in our homes and, you know, things kind of start building up. But the heat just itself, um, as you said, the record temperatures and stuff. For us, in, in the, where I live, I thought it was pretty mild up until recently, you know, and, and of course, we've got to throw COVID in there because when COVID came and everybody got, uh, you know, quarantined, uh, we recently were let loose, you know, people were let out of the houses and we had some fires spark off. So, you know, that that's not really, I mean, it's due to the heat, it's due to the warming, but that's kind of man-made. and. Uh, you know, I think we'll talk about that later, but for the heat right now, I, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it every year at this time. I'm ready for it to go. My birthday's coming up and usually it's cooling off around my birthday. So I'm excited for Oktoberfest, cool weather, hoping, and um, there we go. You know, it's funny as you talk about that, we do get acclimated to the heat here in the Inland Empire. I mean, at the end of the day, besides the, the gloss and the growth and um, the diversity of it, we're in the desert. <laughs> so, so you really can't escape it. I think to the point you raised with the fire, I mean, obviously that impacts the climate, but it, it's not a factor necessarily of the climate. A lot of it, unfortunately, was man-made. Yeah. You know, so, you know, that gets me to the question, you know, is it just poor circumstances or is there an edginess that's in the community, that's in our psyche, that's allowing, you know, these outbursts of flames to, to, to really consume us? <laughs> I love how you're wording this, but yeah, the, 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 there's an explosion happening right now. We are being allowed to get out of our homes and I think everyone's seen it, not... I'm going to say across the nation, um, aggression, anger. Um, I, I think that being stuck in a house, I did a, a seminar today. Um, and when I was talking to the participants, almost all of them are going through depression, anxiety. Um, they're irritable. Um, they're bouts of crying. Um, these are all things that we're dealing with right now because that we are being quarantined and the pandemic. So it's having a huge effect on us mentally um, in a very, very negative way. Uh, when you compound that, so we went from just having the pandemic and having to try to deal mentally in the house to having the heat come as summer came in with the pandemic, a time when everybody's supposed to be out having fun and we're stuck in the house. And then, you know, we kind of progressed as we, into this weather situation that we have coming up. You know, it is, it, it's been a tricky mixture because, again, just culturally, we like being outside. That's what you want to do when you live in Southern California. Right. You know, and now all of a sudden there are restrictions and then they're relaxed and then there are consequences. And I think it creates a sense of confusion 
just among the general population. Parents want their kids outdoors. They're happy. The parents are happier, the kids are happier. But we have to be mindful of restrictions. We have to be mindful of um, COVID being out there. You can't ignore it. Or for those who choose to ignore it, that doesn't mean the consequences go away. Right. So it is a, um, it is a tough road to hoe for us. But I think the, um, when you throw in the, the weather component and the flames, I think that just has everyone a little bit more on edge. And rightly so. And rightly so, right? Um, when you were talking about the explode, like, you know, the, the flames and the explosion, right now, just in our society, period, we're exploding with each other. When we're looking at people going out to the stores, there are fights. People are yelling at each other. You know, there are people are being shot. Um, yes. Uh, uh, domestic abuse is on a rise. Um, you know, it's at, it really is at a high. <clears throat> there are all kinds of interactions um, with people that are in a negative way right now, a lot of negative interactions. So um, this all deals with and builds on us mentally. When we look at the news, we, can, we cannot uh, not put the media into this because everywhere we're looking, social media, Facebook, all of that, everything is really in a negative state. Everything's very stressed, very um, on edge, very, you know, so we're yelling at each other or, or people are yelling at each other on Facebook and then you go out into society and you carry some of that over. So the, the aggressions that we're feeling are, are normal, number one, for the situation that we're in. First off, we're all healthy if we're frustrated, right? We're, we're literally healthy that the fact that we're having um, depression and anxiety right now because this is where we are this is our world today but there are things that you can do and that's you know the key is how do you deal with it not not getting it we're human we're gonna have these things it's how we deal or cope that's going to be the key well you know i think in terms of coping one of the things that we have to be mindful of that goes hand in hand with the pandemic is the whole concept of quarantine. You know, whether we call it, whether you obey it, whether it's enforced, the bottom line is there is a, a, an expectation that people are going to remain closer to home. Vacations aren't available to you. You know, even as you move outside the Inland Empire, um, beaches, maybe they're available, maybe they're not. You know, can I go out, can I not? So that whole idea of quarantine, of, of having to sort of huddle down and uh, hunker down in the midst of this trauma, I think creates um, an elevated sense of stress. How are people dealing with the trauma associated with quarantine when you consider we've been in this situation for about six months now? Ugh. There's so much to what you just said. Number one, it's you can go, you can't go. You can go, you can't go. Can I go here? I can't go there. And it's a rejection every time of our normalcy. Each time that I want to go to a restaurant and sit down and eat and I can't do it, it reminds me and it shocks me again of what is our society? Where are we right now in this world? You know, what is really happening? When our daily lives can be a science fiction movie. I truly continue to talk about um, what is it, Independence Day, I feel like I'm in the movie. I, I'm not with all of the disaster, you know, the, but I, the stress level. Right now, people are going and getting COVID testing. Look at those test sites, you know. They're either in long car, you know, um, tr trains, you know, moving around ambling to get to the site, or you're, you're walking through lines, you know, through rooms and to different pieces. People are covered in in that gear, I, you know, one of those, maybe we're in one of those virus movies right now, you know, right. where we're all, we're experiencing things that are totally, totally foreign and actually negative compared to our daily lives. It's like we've gone into some twilight zone. You know, it's funny how you, you know, interject the media into this because it's something that we have foreseen as something that could possibly happen, but it was always fiction. You know, this is the worst case scenario. Things really just came off the rails. And now not only are we off the rails, we got fires everywhere. <laughs> so again, the idea that there is this, this, this coming together, this hunkering down, we're a little bit out of our comfort zone, I believe, is, as, as people. <laughs> a little. 
<laughs> I'm way out of my comfort zone. I cannot go get any self-care or care that I used to get. Um, and we're at six months, right? What is this? Wait, wait, yeah, is it longer? Six, I mean, we're, we're all losing we're time. We're on the back side of the sixth month, yes. We're all losing time. Who knows what day it is? I, I mean, everybody I talk to doesn't. You know, what day is it? Nobody, it's on, the weekends don't matter because you don't do, you know, we're not doing much during the week. And there's nothing. When you go to go someplace, you can't go to Magic Mountain. You can't go to the Wild Animal Park. You know, you can't go. You can't go. As you said, you know, some days you can go to the beach. Some days you can't. This is maddening. It's maddening, um, especially for us, because we're so used to having the freedom to move and do whatever we literally can conceive. We in America have been able to get up in the morning and go do it. And right now, we can't. We can't go to the corner store without putting on a mask. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't, you know, all of our basic, they want to call them basic rights, have been taken from us at this point as a society. And it's stressful. And it's, it's almost like mourning uh, the death of something, you know. And again, it's all negative. It's not like we all got taken off work and we all got paid millions of dollars and we can all go on vacation in Tahiti. We were all taken off work, put on quarantine, and stuck in our houses. Mm -hmm. Big difference mentally, you know? Big difference. Yeah. So when we start thinking about this, we're, we're, we're sort of, we're not sort of, we're boxed in. It's getting hot. We're getting, an ant we're getting antsy. And frankly, there's no way we can deny that the strain that comes from this, the stress that comes from the heat and the pandemic and quarantine and here we are in the Inland Empire where we're a very outward kind of uh, community where people are out and stuck in traffic and making it to the park. All of these things are coming together. And now we have to live. What strategies, Shore, are you recommending, do you recommend that, um, first of all, let's look at our children, that our children can deploy to maintain a sense of sanity, to, to, to at least migrate towards sanity. What strategies are out there for them? Wow. Um, <clears throat> sanity and comfort usually come with familiarity and, 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 you know, prediction, being predictable. We don't have that. I'm not going to be able to sit here and say, oh, tell your, you know, do this for the kid and they're going to be okay because they're not, because we're not okay. And we're not going to be okay for a minute, right? This is all foreign. We don't know if next week we're going to go deeper in quarantine or if we're going to be able to come out. You know, we, we really don't know. Um, there are a lot of different things going on in society. As far as our, our um, viewers, we have a lot of people of color that watch our show. People are getting killed every day. They're hanging folks in Victorville. You know, I mean, so stress, you want to talk about stress. The stress is, you know, everything that's going on socially in our community. And we are all expressing it in an individual way, but just imagine the stress that I'm just explaining. I feel stress. And to just sit there and imagine yourself, your own stress. And then think about, okay, let's put our two stresses together and add another person's stress, right? That's mm -hmm. when we start seeing community stress, community trauma. Right now, individually, we're looking at each other and we're freaking out our own. We've got ADHD going on, all these things we've talked about with our youth, right? They're their um, dis disobedience disorder, all of these things are happening in the homes. The kids are free, but all we can do is try to put in routine, try to make sure that everything stays as calm and normal as possible. And that would start truly with the parent being able to contain themselves emotionally and mentally and being able to pass those skills down to the youth. So for the youth, it's stability that they need understanding what is going to happen tomorrow, being able to plan, you know, um, again, being interacting with their friends and all of that comes in and out right now. They can do that on the internet. We, there are things that we're just going to have to cope with right now and the youth are going to cope. Uh, and the adults, I'm going to say, start learning these strategies and teach them to our youth. Youth um, organizations should be teaching coping strategies to the youth that they're impacting and working with so that they get the skills that we have to give them to the adults as well. You can't just give them to the youth. So breathe. If we're going to go into them, breathe. 
the first thing that I think that we should all do that I try to do, and sometimes I forget because I'm human, but what we need to do is breathe all the time. When you get that little urge, when you start feeling like you're a little overwhelmed, take a breath, breathe out, breathe in, breathe it out. You wanna blow it out because you're already full of carbon dioxide. Breathe it out, then breathe in. When you breathe in, breathe in positivity, breathe in positive thoughts, breathe in ease and breathe in strength. When you're gonna blow out, blow out the negativity. Blow out anger, blow out confusion, blow out the irritation, blow it out and then breathe in again. Breathe in patience, breathe in love, breathe. Because as you're breathing, it's giving your mind time for the oxygen to get to your brain for you to be able to function and, <clears throat> excuse me, and not to react. So breathing is my biggest tool. It's gonna be the biggest thing that we all have right now. The other thing is empathy. Understanding that you're freaking out and so are they. Everybody around you, all of us, even though we have these great veneers, you know, we are acting like we are just all of that and then we are calm, we're all freaking out. So understand that and then you're able to understand why somebody just snapped at you. Why did somebody just turn me off, you know, turn on the freeway, why did they do that? You know, why did somebody, why did somebody, why did somebody? Because they're just as freaked as you are. And sometimes that means that when we are really freaked out, we self-focus we close in on ourselves and we actually don't really see the world. So my next step would be to do a five, four, three, two, one, which is a basic anxiety um, technique where you start five, look for five things in the room, five things that you can count, look at. Take the time, it's not a rush. Find five things. Four things that you can hear. Every time you do this, you have to go outside of your brain. Four things, Lord, is that my kid I hear screaming, right? Oh, okay. Four things that you can hear. Three things that um, you can, uh, what did I say? I said touch and hear. Touch, hear, feel, taste, and smell are the five that we're gonna go through. So in any order that you wanna do them, it doesn't matter. So, you know, three things that you can touch. I have a phone right here. My case has got ridges on the side and then it's smooth. The front is kind of cool. This is the detail that you're going to do because this pulls you out of an anxiety attack. It pulls you out of your mind, right? Um, things that you can uh, uh, taste, right? Do you have anything around you? What's in your mouth? You already taste it. These types of things that you're going to do. And that will also help level you, bring you out. If you're in an anxiety attack, this is a perfect thing to do because it will take your mind off of the um, physical things that your body is doing to you in that anxiety attack. So um, those would be some of the tools. Breathing and um, you know, pulling yourself out and looking at things around you and engaging with others. You know, I greatly appreciate the clinical perspective that you're able to uh, include with the activities that will help getting a sense of calm, a sense of focus, so that it will help bridge us into at least a, a, an emotional state of normalcy. Um, not overnight, as you, I think you alluded to, but it allows us to make progress in that direction. Yes. I'd like to throw a sociological perspective to it as well, if I may. You know, I think, especially from an adult standpoint, honesty is important. And I'm not saying to reveal family secrets that the kids aren't ready for, but I, all families have them. But yeah. I am saying that there's a sense of honesty that helps us come together with a, current rea with, a, with a concurrent reality. I don't know when you'll be able to return to school. I mean, that is the sense of honesty, not, you know what, I, I, I firmly believe it'll be three weeks and you'll be there with your buddies and you'll be on the schoolyard again and having lunch together. We're not equipped to uh, make that claim, first of all, and all you're doing is delaying the pain and disappointment of our youth when you're not being honest. And the same thing with adults. So 
if you don't know, I think it's important to um, share what you do without going into um, promises that can't be kept. I think the other one is listening. Let's listen to what our partners um, in life are, are telling us. Let's listen to what our kids are telling us. Let's listen to what our parents are telling us. But I think it's important to your point earlier, sure, is that there is effective communication and that starts with listening. You no, know, there's a lot of solutions, a lot of plans, a lot of ideas, but fortunately we have subject matter experts like Shore Denny to help us at least navigate what's been done clinically so that we can at least give our community a chance to persevere through this and be ready to come with a, a stronger sociological perspective on the back end. So with that, knowing that there is going to be a back end for us, I want to um, once again say thank you to Shore Denny and her expertise as we sit here and try and navigate through all of this. Again, mental health, pandemic, the weather, all of them are conspiring, but there is the opportunity for us to navigate through them and get to a, a more emotionally, socially emotionally stability that will make our community stronger. Sure, parting shots. Just, you know, remember that we're all in this together and that we are all going through it together, even though it seems like you're the only one or, you know, you feel like this is only happening to you. Um, and I think that that helps with community trauma and, and how we impact others around us. Think about instead of being that one that cuts us off, being the one that gives the space, being the one that understands that there is a lot of stress going on and, and turning the other cheek and allowing people that um, don't have the understanding of their mental health and are, you know, um, pushing off their anxiety or their stress on other people. Remember that not everyone is at the level that you are and that we've got to, if we're going to get through this, we've got to work together. So um, just stay in peace and love of each other, be kind to each other. I think this is a, a time of really pushing to make sure you're extra kind to people um, and that others make sure they're extra kind to you. So do yourself the favor and do the others of just trying to be mellow in all of this, not taking on the, the intensity that's happening. Try to stay in a, in a, you know, just in the middle of it. Try, try, to, try, to, try to groove through this. And then when you do get ready to cry, just go in your room, let the tears fall, wipe up your face and come back out fighting again because it's all normal. We're all gonna have ups and downs every day. Just understand that this is part of being human. Again, the three C's of SEL, community, collaboration, communication. I'm Glenn W. Hunter. Again, we have our subject matter expert, Shore Denny. Shore, before we go, tell them how to reach us. You can reach us at um, communitynow.info as a website. And you can also reach us at, on YouTube. Subscribe, like us, leave comments. And even if you have something you want us to talk about, please leave it there as a comment and um, share to as many people as you can so that we can keep the conversation going. Once again, thank you for joining us. And in closing always, I encourage each and every one of you, be safe.